afternoon and welcome from myself, Kate Aidy, uh, who has the joy of being the president of Dorset CPRE. Welcome to all of you. Um, I think it's a great time to be having this session. Um, we're in a country which is having huge discussions. We don't do this all that often, but all of the subjects that are raised often have at their heart the problem of housing. And this is the one thing which we gathered today know quite a bit about and want to discuss. And we just hope that everybody else in the country gets the message eventually about the countryside, because that doesn't seem to turn up very much at all when it comes to the great discussions going on. Um, we love our countryside. Gets painted, photographed, filmed all the time. Uh, though I sometimes notice that the perfect view, in some people's view, seems to lack houses. Uh, the exceptions are a ruined castle or a snug little hump with a thatch. But we're a small island and our countryside works for us in so many ways. Farming, food, tourism, travel, sheer joy of being in the countryside and living a way of life. Where we live and what we live in used to be ruled all of those years ago by sheer necessity. You lived where you worked. Today, there are different pressures, availability, affordability, and suitability. What makes a good contribution? What makes an eyesore? And much of the argument today is inevitably ruled by money. So we need our discussion and participation in decision-making in other areas, not just the arguments about those with money. What exactly is affordable? What defines it? Who defines it? Who cares about transport? Who cares about village life? And what about what the countryside looks like? Well, all our people gathered here today are experts and amongst our speakers, and Lord Best is chairing them. Richard Best is a crossbench beer and social housing leader in the Lords. We also have Dr. Quinton Bradley, Senior Lecturer in Planning and Housing at Leeds Beckett University. Alison Ward, Director at Middlemarch Community-Led Housing. Paul Darian is Housing Enabling Team Leader at Dorset, Dorset Council, and Elizabeth Bundred Woodward is Planning Policy Lead at National CPRE. Brad Taylor is Rural Policy and Campaigns Office at National CPRE, and Mike Allen is with Dorset CPRE Planning Group. We've got an enormous amount to discuss. We've got experts, we've got people with opinions. We'd like you all to join in. And also, as I said at the beginning, this is a question, half of which seems to be being debated and talked about by huge numbers in the country, that's housing. But we know here in Dorset that we must also discuss the countryside and housing. It's an absolutely vital discussion. You can post your comments and questions throughout the session. You will see a Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. And just after three o'clock, there'll be a break for tea. At 4.15, the Q&A session begins, chaired by Richard Best, who will now begin our conference. Richard, over to you. Kate, thank you very much indeed for that introduction. I agree with with every word. Uh, lovely, to, lovely to see you. So um, I have a, a special interest um, because I've been chairing the Devon Housing Commission, which has been looking at this same question, the affordable housing crisis, as you're calling it today, uh, but for Devon. And the what has struck me about the situation in Devon, I, I spend most of my time in London because of, because of the old House of Lords, but we think of housing problems as being the problems of big cities, London in particular, and yet 
Devon faces the most ridiculously intense housing problems. I have been quite shocked. Um, we all know the house prices in rural areas like Devon and Dorset are higher than they are elsewhere. And we all know that incomes are relatively lower and therefore home ownership, getting a, a foot on the ladder, first time buyers and all of that is particularly difficult. Indeed, it's more or less impossible for most people to, to start buying their own homes nowadays in, in rural counties. But what I hadn't really appreciated till getting into this Devon Housing Commission is that getting a rented home is also virtually impossible uh, in a lot of places. The private rented sector does not have affordable homes and there isn't any social housing available for people who need it. You are absolutely stuck if you are a young person growing up in, in Dorset and indeed in Devon. Uh, how, can one, how can one measure these things? Probably the best barometer of just how serious the housing situation is, is the number of people who the council have to pay for to go into temporary accommodation, which is extremely unsatisfactory housing nearly always. And in Devon, the, the increase in temporary accommodation has gone rocketing up over the last two years. It is extraordinary. This is the, the short-term accommodation, sometimes in out-of-season holiday accommodation, sometimes in holiday accommodation that now is such low standard that nobody wants it for a holiday anymore. But across the piece, there is just not the availability of anywhere for people to go. Now, there may be special reasons why rural counties, uh, places like Devon and, 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 and Dorset, are particularly affected. And this is the, the growth of, of tourism uh, manifested in the Airbnb phenomena, the short-term lets that have grown very dramatically, a thousand percent increase in, uh, in short-term lettings, taking over properties that previously had been occupied for private renting on a long-term basis. So previously for local people, now for, for tourists, reducing the available stock. And we've charted that in Devon and shown how there has been a greater loss of private rented property in Devon. And I'm sure the same would be true for, for Dorset uh, than in the country as a whole, a dramatically uh, increased loss of rented property. If you can't rent and you can't buy, you are in big trouble. And what we're seeing is a lot of migration out of Devon, and I'm sure out of Dorset. Uh, the people who are moving in, because population is still growing, um, are older people. The young, the people in their 20s and 30s are the ones who are moving out. And the ones who are moving into the county, uh, and I think Dorset would be the same, are in their the age range 55 to 65. I've missed my chance to move into Dorset, sadly. But that's the, that is the, the peak uh, period of, of, of movement inward into Devon. People in there from 55 to 65, they're moving in and the young people are moving out. Well, that's not a recipe for the long-term economic, let alone social uh, communities of, of, of those counties. It's not a, it's not a good sign. Well, uh, let me tell you one or two things that we're talking about in Devon. Our report comes out on uh, July the 19th. So we're, we're hot in the process of marshalling all our recommendations. And we're going to say something about short term lets, those Airbnb ones that I was mentioning. That's great for a spare room. No one's everyone's encouraging that you've got one room to let. Great. Use it to better advantage. But businesses setting up and acquiring properties specifically for short term lets, we think local authorities should have the power to uh, limit that growth of short term lettings. We, we agreed with the government when it said, but hasn't done much about it, uh, that they want to see a new use cl clause, a new use class for planning requirements that means that you'd have to get planning permission to convert a property from long-term lettings to short-term lettings or from owner occupation to short-term lettings. Give local authorities that responsibility. Um, Elizabeth Bundred Woodward was very helpful to me in tabling an amendment to this effect to the Renters Reform Bill, which we've just had in the House of Lords. Uh, I was very grateful for that help. 
we've been work, working on this. That bill has now fallen by the wayside. So we're going to need to have to have to need to revive that uh, that initiative once again. But second homes are attracting a 200 uh, percent uh, council tax as from April of this year in Devon. And I'm sure Dorset will be doing the same, uh, doubling the, the level of, of, of council tax. And as long as that money is recycled back into housing, because there are a lot of other calls on it, I know, but it's really uh, there it has been invented in order to assist the housing situation, that will make a bit of a, a difference. And we, we hope that will be helpful. We try to see that it is ring fenced for housing purposes. But uh, we we will have a, a, a long list of, of recommendations that will make things easier, both for those who need a brand new home, the, the creation of new homes for those younger people, and for older people, not in the 55 to 65 age range, but more the 75 upwards, because Devon has an enormously high level of under-occupation of properties that have got three bedrooms or four bedrooms and one person living in them, possibly two people. Uh, and if we can entice and encourage people to move to somewhere smaller, we free up family accommodation uh, and help the whole the whole process so we're going to come up with all our recommendations for, for planning and, and uh, aspects of housing and development in Devon. And I, I hope that some of the lessons that, that we will be laying out will be useful to Dorset as well. I just finished by saying, I think we know what, what good looks like, what we would be, what we would hope would happen. I opened a lovely scheme in Powerstock just near Bridport. Uh, and th this just exemplified all the things that can happen if one gets rural housing right, housing in rural counties right. Uh, it needs a willing landowner. There was a family called the Guppies uh, who made available the land at a very, very advantageous basis. That was great. There was a rural exception site planning consent. That's very important for getting things done that wouldn't otherwise happen in a rural area, an exception site for the affordable housing that was built there. The local authority was terrific. That was Dorset uh, County. Uh, Paul Derrian, who we're going to hear from later, did, did great things in, in assisting the process. In, in, I think there was a rural housing enabler in the early days of that scheme and rural housing enablers uh, who can bring together landowners, planners, the parish council, uh, sort things out between all the different parties. We're very, we're very much in favour of those in the in the Devon Commission as well, but uh, this this scheme, the 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 beautiful little power stock scheme, nine houses for local people, making a huge difference to the to the local community, bringing all those children that fill the school. I visited the the three quarters empty school just in the village before the arrival of nine families with with lots of kids, terrific stuff. A housing association willing, willing to work on it and get the, the grants. This was Hasto. Hasto worked with a CLT, a community land trust. That's a terrific invention of relatively recent uh, uh, duration, the, the CLTs. Dorset and Devon are real market leaders in seeing these community land trusts uh, that get local people deeply involved in the in the whole process. We're going to hear from Alison Ward later on. She's part of my Devon Housing Commission, and we're going to hear from her later this afternoon. And the whole community revived and reinvigorated by having nine families uh, who couldn't possibly afford to buy in the lovely little village like Powerstock, and I'm afraid couldn't these days afford to rent otherwise. So it can, it can be done, and it can be done so well. Uh, with nice architecture, uh, perfect for its setting in a rural context. Everything can go right. We just need an awful lot more of that kind of housing for local people on an affordable basis. So off we go into the excellent debate that I know will now follow.